recently, or I should say, what we have noticed recently, is the accusations against the Roman Catholic Church in relation to pedophilia. Now, this is not a new accusation by any means. This has been going on for a while, and indeed there is truth to this. What you may not know is that this is organised, and the Roman Catholic Church is in such disarray that it will be very difficult for it to pull itself out. Now, I was a theistic Satanist, and infiltrating the church was an option I had. Indeed, in 1988 and 1989, I used to buy a magazine called Adults, which was common in Australia, which concerned the Roman Catholic Church and subjects and issues regarding it and what I noticed was that it had advertisements and vacancies for orders, clerical orders and myself and other Satanists that I knew you know, on occasion would consider joining the church in order to corrupt teachings in order to change the context of words in prayers so as to make them invalid or void. These days do I think that the pedophiles are theistic Satanists. If they do remain in the church they would be a small minority, a very small minority Possibly 3% but I suspect it is way lower and practically non-existent. Now the issue of pedophilia was brought up you know, when we talked about these things amongst ourselves. And at the time I was about 20 and I thought it was to do with having sex with 15 year olds, 14 year olds, possibly 13 year olds who were under the church's care uh, whether it be in an orphanage or a ward of a state but was under the care of the church. I did not realise how far down the bar went in regards to ages. So when I look back over it, now I realise what the purpose was. The younger the children were, the better. Because if they were abused while under church care, they would most likely become atheists because they would blame God blame Jesus Christ, blame every member of the clergy and blame the church as a whole for what had happened to them and this is something we wanted to achieve to poison the wealth so to speak. But now we see the church the Roman Catholic Church in serious problems and I will tell you because I have had contact with people associated with the church who have told me that possibly 10% of the clergy, of the priests are what you call the remnant they are people who believe in Jesus Christ and that which he taught. As for the other 90%, well, 
you've got people who join up either because they're pedophiles or they just want somewhere to crash out until they get a real estate license or a stockbroking license. Now, with the pedophilia, I know, I know most people want to know about this, I was told it had become organised in the 1920s. So that's how far back we are going. That's when pedophilia was organised by theistic Satanists in order to destroy the church, to attack the institution of the church. Along the lines of, well, if the church can't protect you, why bother belonging to it? And we see these days, we have activists who are calling for people to abandon their religion, especially if it's Christianity. And we see a collective guilt being applied along the lines of identity politics. If you identify yourself for whatever reason as a Catholic, then there is a collective guilt on you for pedophilia, even though you may have had nothing to do with it. The Catholic Church also has a problem with what's called the Lavender Mafia. This is basically homosexuals who have infiltrated their way into the priesthood and basically engage in gay sex. It's actually a subculture now within the priesthood of the Catholic Church. So... When we look at the victims in regards to accusations of pedophilia, I've noticed there has been three waves. The first wave is those who have been abused and have come forward. And all accusations should be investigated by the police. The second wave usually consists of those who have been abused but had kept silent on it or else relatives, friends, those who were told by the victim but could not go any further because the victim did not wish to. But now that people have come forward these people have also come forward. And again, their testimony should be examined. But now we've got a third wave. And a third wave are people who don't actually have a problem with the pedophilia but have a problem with the church. So, a pedophile priest can molest children. And that's not the offender, it's the church which is the offender. So, these people who usually consist of the third wave are usually Marxists, atheists, homosexuals and basically the scum of society, the progressives who just want to attack the institution of the church which is something that theistic Satanists aimed at. So you've basically got atheists doing the work of theistic Satanists and when you look at it, when I look at it, the things that I was looking at doing when I was a theistic Satanist is being done by atheists 
who do it for free. And the collective guilt, which is what the third wave pushes, not only are all Catholic priests guilty, but also the nuns, lay preachers, church workers, and the parishioners. This is what identity politics is really about. And indeed, there is also a problem with the people who identify as Catholics. These are amongst the parishioners who may not actually be believing God, who might actually be atheists, or who might just pick and choose what they consider faith and what they consider God. Now, looking at it, you might say Catholicism is in big trouble. Well, it is in big trouble. Now, I've been told that the Pope is regarded as a rotten Pope, and I believe he is too. He is more of a Marxist, if anything. But other churches should not rub their hands thinking about how they can move in on the Catholic Church and its parishioners. Other churches are not immune to this, and indeed other religions are not immune to this. So we have what I call a systematic infiltration of the church as an institution with all its members, both in the clergy and the parishioners. And they are seeking to pervert and destroy that particular church. In other churches, you know, you've got ethnic parishes. Now, you might say, well, the Greek Orthodox Church is a good religion to jump ship to if one is leaving Catholicism. And there's various Orthodox churches, but they are all based on ethnic lines. If you do not speak that language of that ethnicity, then really there's no point in you going there, and you are most probably not welcome. The Roman Catholic Church is targeted because it is the archstone or keystone, indeed the cornerstone, which maintains Christianity. Take out the Roman Catholic Church and you'll just be left with a bunch of Christian churches which have no relation to each other at all. This is what it's about. So, now, infiltration also extends to charities and civil authorities. Now, in Australia, everybody complains about how the various public service institutions are now left-wing. They are. They are basically Marxist. And in charities as well, they have a similar problem. You know, I heard of a story of a woman who went to a Salvation Army uh, charity shop looking to get some furniture because she had moved into a place recently she had no money, no furniture. And she was told that no one could help her because their priority, their first priority was to serve Muslims. That's what she was told. And I believe this is what she was told. So this is a war against Christianity. And it was not a Muslim who told the woman that 
the first priority is to serve Muslims. As far as I could tell, she was white and had a short back and sides haircut and was most probably a lesbian. So you've got these Marxists, which is basically a bucket term I use and most accurate, who are waging a war against Christianity. And this is done on the motivation would be atheism. And yet they are doing the exact same things that when I was a theistic Satanist, I was seeking to do myself. So if I was still a theistic Satanist, I wouldn't have to lift a finger. These people are doing it for me, doing everything for me. So, look, I do believe the Catholic Church does need a reformation, both in the spiritual aspect and indeed the political aspect. Remember, the Vatican is a nation state and no other religion has ever made it to this level. So you can see where or why it is a priority to take it down. And it does seem there are atheists behind this, even though theistic Satanists put the idea into their head and push them forward to do so, you'll find all manner of people jumping on board the bandwagon because they think they're going to get somewhere with this. But I made this clip to tell Roman Catholics Look, give of the Pope, he's a bad Pope. I give it to you, half of your parishioners hate him. As look for reformation. Make the church accountable on a local level by its parishioners. If the parishioners can keep a look out or keep a good watch on what the clergy are doing, they will most probably leave, they will most probably seek to go somewhere else where the standards are lackadaisical. And the Vatican should look to expel these churches if that is what their parishioners want. So, really, it's up to the locals, to the parishioners, to get priests in who wish to clean up house. So you're looking at a reformation. And hopefully the church will not fall to pieces. But what all the atheists want is for you to abandon God, to abandon Jesus, to kick out the Virgin Mary and basically destroy your faith. That's what it is really all about. So this, you, the Kumbaya crowd, the peace and love crowd, those, those days are over. This is a war and you're going to have to fight it. And if you look to clean up things, you'll find that many non-Catholics will back you up. 